Brigadier General Martin and Ms. Martin, Command Sergeant Major Travers, Commanders, Command Sergeant Majors, Distinguished Guests, Leaders, Soldiers, Families, and Friends, welcome to the Fort Irwin and National Training Center 2015 Days of Remembrance. On behalf of the Dental Clinic Command and the EO and EEO offices, we thank you for attending. At this time, soldiers and civilians of the Fort Irwin Dental Clinic Command will light candles symbolic of the lights shining in the darkness and a light which can never be overcome. We light a candle to honor those whose lives were put out, whose dreams, hopes, and lights were snuffed out too soon. We light a candle for those whose entire families were decimated and who lie in unmarked graves. We light a candle for those who stood upright while others were bending to immoral wills. We light a candle for the righteous among the nations who risked and even gave their lives to help their fellow human beings. We light a candle for those brave soldiers who liberated the camps who carried the dead and near dead in their arms to a kinder and more humane future, and for those who served with allied forces to put an end to tyranny and oppression. We light a candle for the nearly six million Jews and for the six million non-Jews who perished in a planned system of human destruction, the scale of which had never been before that. We light a candle for those who live even now under the yoke of oppression in places where the threat of genocide is real and ever present. The theme for this year's remembrance is learning from the Holocaust, choosing to act. I like you to consider how ordinary people confronted the Holocaust and chose to take action even at the risk and expense of their own lives. Ask yourself, how would I respond if this happened today? Ask, what may we learn from how ordinary people, citizens of the world, responded to these historic tragedies? Today, we will see how some individuals took action to help save lives. Please direct your attention to watch a short video for about four minutes which describes why we remember the Holocaust. Please be aware that some of, these, some of this material is graphic and may be disturbing. Memory is what shapes us. Memory is what teaches us. We must understand that's where our redemption is. I think the important thing to understand about this cataclysmic event is that it happened in the heart of Europe. Germany was respected around the world for its leading scientists, its physicians, its theologians. It was a very civilized, advanced country. It was a young democracy, but it was a democracy. And yet it descended not only into social collapse, but world war and eventually mass murder. 
a strong man came to power in Germany whose ideas were that Germany has to create a national community which would include only the Aryan race, which he considered superior, and all the people who did not belong to the Aryan race could be eliminated. With planning and propaganda, he was able to convince most of the German people to go along with him. Insensitive to what happened to the Jews who had basically been their former neighbors. And he managed to build concentration camps and killing centers and finally gas chambers to annihilate six million Jews. And at the same time, also millions of others murdered in a systematic government-sponsored way. And it's made up of so many people who participated in different ways, who made it possible. People who follow orders without question, bystanders who watch and do nothing, ordinary men and women simply going with the flow. The events and the results of the Holocaust were so devastating. It was an extreme that we can barely imagine. So mind-boggling that the temptations to forget and to repress, to just put it out of mind, are very real. But we remember. We remember because it is an unthinkable scar on humanity. We need to understand what human beings are capable of. We gather today to mourn the loss of so many lives and celebrate those who saved them, honor those who survived, and contemplate the obligations of the living. Days of Remembrance is our nation's annual commemoration of the Holocaust. This time that was both a blight on the history of humanity, but also a shining moment for the people who were brave enough to put an end to it. We are remembering, first and foremost, all the victims. And that is not only the Jewish victims, but there were many non-Jewish victims. Of course, the Jews were the primary target. The millions of innocent people, including my family and friends, who were killed because they were of the wrong religion, because they had no means of protecting themselves. It's also important to remember the rescuers. These were people who risked not only their own lives, sometimes the lives of their family, to save a fellow human being. And we also remember our American soldiers who were fighting to win World War II and in the course of that liberated these concentration camps. Those that arrived at the camps in 1945 and were just horrified at what they saw That was a huge task for the American soldiers to help bring humanity back to these people who had been dehumanized for years, to give them medical care. Looking back allows us to understand how important it is for us to serve in a country where we have the strength and the might and the will to defend those that are defenseless. So Days of Remembrance is an opportunity for us to remember the, the suffering that was and the efforts that were made to put an end to such suffering. And it's a call to conscience today in our world to make sure that we aren't the silent ones standing by contributing to the suffering of others.
1945, at the end of the war, I would have thought that there would never be another Holocaust, that the world was so shocked by what had happened that the world would not permit that. And yet you see what happened in Bosnia, what happened in Rwanda, what happened in, in Darfur. So there are still millions of people being persecuted because of their ethnicity. It's really a moral challenge to us to do more in our own lives when we confront injustice or hatred or genocide. Those who suffered and died in the Holocaust, we can honor them today by not being silent. Remembering ties the past and the present together with a powerful, simple thread. This is not right. The important thing is that one should not become indifferent to the suffering of others, that one should not stand by and just raise one's hands and say, there's nothing I can do, I'm just a little one person because I think what every one of us does matters. It's not enough to curse the darkness of the past. Above all, we have to illuminate the future. And I think that on the day of remembrance, the most important thing is to remember the humanity that is in all of us, to leave the world better for our children and for posterity. I am Bishop Chris Holmes. When the Germans demanded a list of our island's Jewish residents, Mayor Greer turned to me for help. I chose to act. As we negotiated for their lives, 192 Jews fled to local villages where non-Jewish locals hid them. When the Germans again demanded a list of deportation, I presented them with a list, comprising of only my name and the mayor. Here I said of the Jews. At war's end, all 275 of our Jewish residents were still alive. I witnessed a brutal deportation at a Jewish children's home in Amsterdam in 1942. I am a social worker, and I chose to act by engaging in rescue work throughout the war. Among the more than 150 Jews I rescued were Freddie Pollack and his children. I chose to place them in hiding in a house in the country. I even lived with them as a children's caregiver. I even shot and killed a Dutch policeman who discovered the children hiding in the home when Freddie returned following the rape. My name is Tatia Kansevich. During the German occupation in Iraq, my daughter, Anya and I, chose to act by sheltering a family. The family consisted of a boy, his mother, aunt, and uncle. They hid in the shed and attic of our home. My daughter's in charge of bringing them food and water. One day, when she was home alone, she dissuaded two German soldiers in search of straw from climbing the attic where they would have found this Jewish family. My name is George Mandel Montego. As first secretary of the Salvadorian Council in Geneva during World War II, I, with the consent of the Salvadorian Council, Colonel Jose Castellanos, issued certificates of protection to thousands of European Jews, identifying them as citizens of El Salvador. Between 1942 and 1944, 
he sent notarized copies of these certificates via courier and other means into German-occupied Europe, saving many of the holders from deportation. I am Yuko Sochev. In 1943, I was a sanitation worker. I discovered several Jews escaping the ghetto through the city sewer system. Using my knowledge of the system's canals, I chose to act by suggesting hiding places. With my wife and a co-worker, we brought the hidden Jews food and news from the outside world. While I initially received payments for my efforts, I continued to help the Jews hide even after the payments stopped. 10 of the 21 Jewish refugees survived. I am Alfred Rossman. As a manager of a confiscated textile factory in the Jewish ghetto, I produced goods for the German forces. I chose to act by saving the Jewish forced laborers working in my factory. I issued work permits to exempt them for deportation. I repeatedly warned them for obtaining deportations. I often traveled to the forest parts of the ghetto in Benzin to warn them of these deportations. Even uh, driving to the forest parts, to so urge them to ignore summons that would lead to deportation. In 1944, they Gestapo arrested and murdered me. My name is Rafik Veseli. After Germany dismembered Yugoslavia and occupied Serbia in 1941, the Mandel, the Jewish family from Belgrade, escaped from Albania. There, Rosa Mandel opened a photography shop and hired myself. I was a 16-year-old Albanian Muslim to be his apprentice. When the Mandels were threatened by deportation after Germany occupied Albania in September of 1943, I chose to act. I convinced my parents to hide the family in our home village, Kruje. The Mandel children posed as Muslims, while their parents hid in our barn until liberation. I am Anton Schmidt. I was born in Austria and drafted into the German army. I was stationed in Lithuania in 1941. Appalled by the dreadful conditions of the Vilna ghetto and the German massacre, massacres of Jews, I chose to act. I used my access to resources to provide provisions, transportation to safer areas, and forged papers. I also provided information and transportation to the Jewish resistance. Fearmarked authorities arrested me in treason, for treason in 1942 and executed me on April 13, 1942. My name is Reverend Dwight Stewart Shaw, and this is my wife, Martha, a social worker. At the request of the American Unitarian Association, my wife did not travel to Prague before the Germans occupied the city. We chose to act by assisting refugees that were facing Nazi persecution. We established a network of relief and immigration assistance registering refugees, distributing food, arranging prisoner releases, and facilitating travel to safer destinations. At risk of arrest by the Germans, we left Prague in the summer of 1939. We later established a way station for the refugees in Portugal. Defining genocide. Whenever genocide has occurred, individuals have made the choice to rescue others. In 1994, in Rwanda, orphanage director Damas Gazimba, with the help of American aid worker Carl Wilkins, saved 400 people. Miles Lakovic, a Serbian taxi driver, transported the wounded to hospitals and delivered supplies to the needy on the stage on Sarajevo during the mid-1990s. Regardless, their acts of courage are still the exception. What can we learn from those who choose to act? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce 
the commander of the Fort Holman Dental Clinic Command, Colonel Todd Kamora. Mrs. Martin, fellow commanders, command sergeant majors, and other honored guests, civilians, soldiers, and family of the Fort Irwin and National Training Center. Today for our days of remembrance, we've heard some stories and seen some pictures of individuals who about 75 years ago chose to act. Let's give the soldiers and civilians of the Fort Irwin Dental Clinic Command a round of applause for their efforts in sharing these stories. Today I'd like us to consider this theme for the Holocaust, choosing to act. My first question is, do you think we're at risk in today's army for something like this to happen 75 years later? Do we face stereotypes and hate groups in our units today? How about outside of our army? I don't think the German army ever saw it coming or they waited too long before they chose to act. There were some Germans who chose to act and plot against the Fuhrer. Some who stand out are Colonel Klaus von Straufenberg, General Friedrich Olbrich, and Pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer. These were shot for their plot in Operation Valkyrie. After this plot, there would be more than 7,000 Germans who would be arrested, and 5,000 would end up dead. This poses a huge ethical dilemma. Have you ever had to speak up for something you thought was right at the risk of your own career, or at the risk of your family, or at the risk of your very own life? I submit to you that these individuals we've learned about today, 75 years later, demonstrated the ethical and timeless value of dignity and respect to the highest standard. They valued it to the point of giving up their own lives. These individuals chose to act and intervene on behalf of their fellow humans. These individuals truly demonstrated the Army value of selfless service. This was a huge ethical dilemma where you had a Muslim who gave up his life to save fellow Jews. Do you think it was easy to make the decision to act this may have been easy for some, and may have been much more difficult for others. What makes it so difficult to make the right decision? I know this is one of the reasons why our government and our army invest so much money, time, and effort towards the EO and EEO program. We are always at risk for this type of behavior. It's human nature to think that we are better than someone else based on our people group, where we come from, our age, our education, our gender, our religion or non-religion, or our socioeconomic status. The EO and EEO program is not just for entertainment or to taste different types of foods, but to develop our awareness so we can make the right to choice, make the right choices, the right ethical choices, and act in the right way whenever the situation may arise. I hope you've learned something today about cultural diversity in choosing to act, to allow all personnel to contribute to their full potential. If you know the right course of action ahead of time, it makes it a lot easier to make the right decision. Who knows, I might not even be here if some, someone hadn't chosen to act on my behalf. Choosing to act for the right cause is the warrior ethos. Being a good battle buddy, a good Samaritan, regardless of our cultural diversity, is relevant to every generation. One person can make a difference by choosing to act. Lead, train, win, serving to heal, honor to serve.